Here are some important reminders to help ensure that you and your family are safe. Wash your hands thoroughly and regularly with antibacterial soap for at least 20 seconds. Please avoid crowded places and make sure you are at least one to two meters away from others. Never leave the house without your face mask. Make sure it covers your nose down to your mouth. Make the most out of the online services that are available today. If you must leave your home, please sanitize your belongings and bathe immediately upon return. Remember, W-O-W, -W, wash your hands, observe social distancing, wear your face masks. Being safe and staying healthy should be our number one priority. Thank you. Good morning, church. Welcome to Without Walls. We hear a church that not only gathers around the gospel once a week, but a gospel-shaped people trained to live in community throughout the week and in every context. We're so happy to have you here this Sunday, and I pray that you encounter Jesus today. Here are the events for the week. Join our Viber community. Simply scan this QR code to get the latest updates and quick access to our Zoom links. Subscribe to Daily Devotions. Email community at withoutwalls.ph. Join a life group today. Email us at community at withoutwalls.ph. Prayer are happening every Monday at 8 p.m. The Living Room presents Equip Midweek. Join us as we learn how to better understand the gospel, scripture, and discipleship. Happening every Wednesday, 7 p.m. via Zoom. Email us at community at withoutwalls.ph. Log on to withoutwalls.ph to find out how you can give. I'm reading from Psalm 86, verse 11 to 13. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. Let us now ready our hearts to worship the Lord. i 
Exodus 14, verses 10 to 15. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians coming after them. The Israelites were terrified and cried out to the Lord for help. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? 
Isn't this what we told you in Egypt? Leave us alone so that we may serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Don't be afraid. Stand firm and see the Lord's salvation that he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you must be quiet. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to break camp. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Without Walls, Philippines. I thank you that we can gather together, near or far, even if it's online. I thank you for Pastor. Come and anoint his words as he leads us in worship in your word today. Anoint his words with truth and love. And I also pray for the congregation. Keep them in healthy and safe wherever they are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
What a wonderful day. What a wonderful morning to worship God together. Amen? You know, individually, we can worship God and lift up our hands and sing. That's, that's worship. But on Sundays, we get to gather, even digitally, we get to gather and worship God together. Amen? So in your own rooms, bedrooms, or living rooms, lift up your hands when you worship. Stand up. Worship God with your heart, with your spirit. Amen. Even from your own homes. Let us worship God together. Can you say amen? And worship is not just the songs that we sing. It's also the preaching of the word. It's also the hearing and the listening to the gospel. Everything that we do during this time together, is, is worship. In fact, worship is not just on Sundays. It's every day of the week. Worship is a lifestyle. Our whole lives is a life of worship. Can you say amen? Even, even now, as even giving, even giving is a form of worship. And as we give, as we participate in what the Lord is doing through wow, we are, you and I, are worshiping as well. We're going to flash on the screen a QR code. Then it's going to be flashed after the, uh, after the message as well. That you can scan and it'll open up to you our giving portals to make it easier for us to give. Let's worship God together this morning. Can you say amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the time that we have together, Lord God, not just to gather, but to give unto you, to give off our lives, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that you'll teach us something today that we will never forget, Lord God. We praise you. We honor you. We thank you for being in our presence, Holy Spirit. Change us, touch us, challenge us, confront us, rebuke us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Previously, we talked about, we were in the book of Exodus. But it made me remember, like, as far as I'm concerned, I always, I am a Christian now, a leader of a church, even a pastor. And I pray. I, I pray nicely worded prayers, but still, even doing that, it's not very difficult to take God for granted, isn't it? When life begins to happen, like it is happening now, many times we behave otherwise. We get anxious about tomorrow and because we're anxious because we're unsure because we're depressed or or discomforted we get irritated with people many times we blame people sometimes even blame god forgetting all the while that like, i'm a christian forgetting that god is with me and in me. When life begins to happen, 
we wonder why, why are things happening in this way? Have you ever thought like that? I have. Have you ever taken God for granted? Have you? I have. Have you forgotten who God is in your life? My friends, I have. Maybe we won't admit it. Maybe you won't admit it. Because we are Christians. After all, we pray, you pray. But when bad times come, many times we can panic and actually forget who we are and who God is. We start complaining. We start bickering. We start blaming people, even blaming God. Hopefully today, we will learn something from the Word of God because His Word does not change. His Word is always relevant. God changes not. Can you agree with me and say amen? Previously, we were in the book of Exodus and the king of Egypt has just let the children of Israel, the children of God, leave Egypt. And he becomes conscious of this and changes his mind. He said in verse 5 of Exodus 14, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. In spite of the plagues that hit them, they realize how much they need the Israelites. So in verse 6, it says, So he, the Pharaoh, had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. So in other words, the Pharaoh didn't just send his army, didn't just send his generals. He led his army. He was with them. He wanted to be there himself to apprehend the escaping children of God. In verse 7, he took 600 of the, the best chariots. Imagine that. Along with all the other chariots of Egypt. 600 of the best and everything else that Egypt had. Chariots, I mean. He took them to chase after the children of Israel. With officers over all of them. In other words, Pharaoh led the army himself and brought his best with him. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. Verse 9. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near Pihiroth, opposite Baal Zephon. Remember, the last time we were together, that this is the very place that God wanted his people to be camped. But did the people know this? Were they wondering? Were they confused? Were they concerned? Why, why here? Maybe so. Verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, look at this. The Israelites looked up. In other words, their point of view, their perception... The Egyptians were on higher ground than the Israelites. As Pharaoh approached, in verse 10, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians coming after them. So the Egyptians were in a position of strength, strategically. And so the Israelites were terrified. Here's where we left off last, last time we were together. The Israelites were terrified and cried out to the Lord for help. Can you imagine the terror that they were in? They cried out to the Lord for help. 
What a prayer that must have been. Have you ever prayed a prayer like that? Crying out to the Lord for help. It was a compelling prayer. It was not a nicely composed prayer, a, a sophisticated uh, prayer. It was not prepared. Amen. They did not study to pray like that. They were crying out. They were, it was a spontaneous plea to God for his help. Have you ever prayed a prayer like that? That you didn't care who was listening. You didn't care how it sounded. Many, many years ago, I was trying to, in a beach, I was trying to use a surfboard and the waves were big. I was trying to learn and, and I didn't want anybody to teach me. I wanted to learn it myself. So I paddled out. A lot of people were paddling out. It was in a, another country. And the waves were big. But I can do this. No, no problem, Diva. I'm an athlete. I got out and then you wait for the waves. I was watching them. Took some time to watch the other people. How, how do they do this? And they paddle. When they see a wave coming, they paddle ahead. And so when the wave comes, it carries your surfboard with you on it. And then you stand up, of course, right? Mistake of all mistakes. I caught the biggest wave that day. And I was, when I realized that the wave was carrying me, I couldn't even stand up. I felt the surfboard go like this. And me go like that. And the surfboard just went to the shore. And I was there in the deep. But before the, surf, the surfboard actually went up and came down on me. So I was not well. I was hit by the, by the same surfboard. But at the same time, didn't feel any pain. But I, I tried to stand up. I couldn't stand up. I was out in the deep. And I was embarrassed for a while to ask for help. I was in a foreign country. There are people beside me, all surfers. But after a while, I was terrified. And I shamelessly asked for help. Shamelessly. The children of Israel cried out for help, did not care how they looked. They were terrified. So it was a compelling cry for help. It was a compelling prayer. And the Bible says, the Israelites were terrified and cried out to the Lord for help. The Israelites, all of them. So they not only prayed a compelling prayer, they prayed a corporate prayer. They prayed as a community, not just two people praying, not just the prayer warriors. It was all the people crying out to the Lord. It was compelling. It was corporate. And it, it was credible. There was imminent danger. They were in a bad place. It was credible. At least it looked like it. Imagine thousands upon thousands of people crying out to the Lord at the same time. It really looked credible and convincing. It was real. It was authentic. Or was it? Look what follows. That was verse 10. After crying out to the Lord for help, look at this. Look at verse 11. This is where we start our scripture reading for today. Our, our text for today. Verse 11 says, After crying out to the Lord, they said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Imagine, after crying out to the Lord, all of a sudden, a change of attitude. Cried out to the Lord, Help me. Help us, Lord. The, the very next verse, they said to Moses, their leader, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? 
sarcastic, no? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? They're blaming Moses now. Verse 12, isn't this what we told you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. The Bible says, we told you even in Egypt, leave us alone. Don't take us with you anymore that we may serve the Egyptians. Didn't we say that? Then they add, it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. They prayed to God, but at the same time, they blame Moses. They blame, it's not our fault that we're here, Moses. Diba we told you in Egypt? Moses, Have you made similar complaints in your life? Have you prayed to God and then at the same time blamed others? Have you uttered more or less the same words? You've prayed, but right afterward, the same mouth that prayed, the same mouth complains. The same mouth bickers. The same mouth even blames. Their crying out may have been compelling. They may have all prayed corporately as a community. Their crying out may even have sounded credible or convincing. But their crying out was far from it. It was, in fact, cynical. Their crying out to God was really unbelieving, faithless full of doubt. When they cried out to God, they really did not believe that God would answer their prayer. Church, can we relate to this as well? Have we prayed nice prayers or compelling prayers, but really in our hearts, we did not believe that God was going to answer our prayers? We didn't act as if he would answer our prayers or that even he, he heard them. Can we relate to this? I can many times. Have we prayed prayers and we're crying, we're sobbing, we're desperate. We're, it's with great earnestness that we prayed, but in our hearts, do we really believe that God will respond? Or is it just bakasakali? We pray, we plead, we beg, but without faith. And we blame people pa. It's not my fault, it's other people's fault. Are our prayers laced with the apprehensions that we have? With the, with the doubts, with the fears, with the negative feelings that we have? Or are they focused on God's promises for us? Hmm. Think about that. These last couple of weeks, several weeks, it's amazing how Filipinos were so engrossed with the elections in the United States. And I'm sure every family, everyone was glued to the television, to, to, to social media to find out what was happening. And as we saw from the results, you know, it's, it was pretty close for a long, even now there's, there are allegations of fraud, etc. Para Pilipinas, no? But you know, when we, when I talk to my classmates and we have a chat group on Viber, and you see the tensions, you see the uh, the loyalties, or the uh, if they were Republican or they were Democrats, and then classmates started saying, you know, let's pray for Biden. 
let's pray for Biden to win. So they, they, they form prayer groups. And I, I guess that happened even here. But yet the same people that prayed. I know of several who could not sleep for days and nights, sleepless days and nights, worrying, imagining, fearful, doubtful. See, their prayers may not have been laced with faith. And when it got clearer that Biden was winning, the same classmates that were fearful, that were doubtful, all of a sudden said, God is good. God is good. Biden won. And I'm, and I'm there on my, lap, on my laptop wanting to answer, wanted to ask a question. They were saying Biden won. God is good. What if Biden did not win? Would God still be good? Hmm. But I didn't do that. I'm a Christian now. I'm born again. <laughs> Amen. You see, prayers, I'm saying all of this because prayers, our crying to the Lord, must, needs to be laced with faith. Amen. In James chapter 5, starting with verse 13, and I'm going to be using the Christian Standard Bible. It says, is anyone among you suffering? He should pray. Is anyone cheerful? He should sing praises. If anyone among you is sick, he should call the elders of the church. And they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15 is where I want to go. The prayer of faith will save the sick person and the Lord will raise him up. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. When we are in any situation, desperate or otherwise, when we pray, we need to pray compelling prayers. Amen. We need to pray not just individually, but even corporately, as a community, as a church, as a congregation, we need to pray sincerely, credible, authentic prayers, not cynical prayers, not prayers without faith, not prayers that what we say is nice, but what we really believe is that we don't really think that God will answer. Let's just throw a prayer up there. We need to pray with a trust and faith that we have a God who is merciful, who knows all, sees all, and imparts grace for you and for me during our time of need. Church, can you say amen? Amen. The children of Israel cried out. Yes, they cried out, but without faith. But look, God is still gracious. God is still merciful and is still sovereign in spite of the absence of their faith. Still, he saved the Israelites. That is, that is how our God is. Amen. In spite of our faithless faith, our faithless prayers, I mean. God still responds. The Israelites were praying Moses Kasalanan mo ito eh. They blamed him savagely. They wanted to take things into their own hands. They wanted, they prayed to God for a spiritual salvation and, and, and for him to intercede. But then they, they want to take matters into their own hands. Independent from God. I have a golfer friend who texted me recently. He, he went to a military course to play, golf course to play. 
And all of a sudden he was told he could not play because the course was going to be closed because a general was going to pray, play with his guests. And so my friend was texting me really riled up, really mad, vehemently mad, seething. Pare, hindi ako na makakalaro dahil itong general ito, darating, iko-close daw yung, yung course kasi... So I said, I asked him, bro, ano, mo, ano ba rangko mo dyan? Di ba military court? Ano ba rangko mo? Ayun nga problema, sabi niya, boy scout lang ako dito eh. Ayun pala eh. But still, he wanted to take matters into his own hands. He wanted to... How many of us are the same way? Para bang we want... We want to give people what they, we want to have people get what they deserve. And sana, you're the one that can give them what they deserve. That's why in our culture, in the Western culture, we, we, we remember that saying, don't get mad, get even. And that resonates with me. <laughs> we, we want to get even. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, starting with verse 14, and I, I, I just want you to listen to this. It says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Even that sometimes it's hard to do. Somebody was blessed with this and got a promotion or made some money and they tell you about it, they share with you and, then, and, you, and you rejoice with them. That's what the Bible says. How many of you rejoice with those who rejoice all the time? Weep with those who weep is much easier than rejoice with those who rejoice sometimes. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Hello. Hindi pala pwede yun. Bakit naman hindi pwede yun? Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If possible, as far as it depends on you. In other words, it doesn't matter if that guy wants to live peaceably with you. It depends on you. You live peaceably with him, even if he does not respond. Hello. Amen. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, watch this, leave room for God's wrath. Because it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Leave room for God. Amen. Can't we, as followers of Christ, leave room for God? Leave room for God to act, to respond, to intervene, to show His power, to show His grace. You and I, we cannot cure every hurt. We cannot overcome every obstacle that comes our way. We cannot solve every problem, but we can leave room for God. Can you say amen? We may not be able to answer every question, every issue, even during this COVID pandemic. We don't know all the answers, but we can leave room for God to work things out His way. 
in his time. Amen? We cannot do the impossible, but God can. Leave room for God to do what he does best. Ephesians 3, verse 20 and following. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we can ask, all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Church, leave room for God. About an hour later, my friend, this same friend, who was riled up in a military course, texted me and said, these are his words, Pastor, tama ka. Umulan ng malakas. Canceled ang tournament ng general. <laughs> Leave room for God. May mga issue, may mga bagay na hindi natin kayang harapin. Pagbigyan natin ng Panginoon na gumalaw. Amen. The Israelites were panicking. They cried out to the Lord. But they really did not believe that God was going to act on their behalf. They chose instead to complain, to blame the man of God, Moses. But God, seeing all of that, tells them otherwise. He does not rebuke them. He does not punish them. He encourages them. Verse 13, but Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. They're blaming him. He's telling the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm and see the Lord's salvation that he will accomplish for you today. They didn't have long to wait. The Lord's salvation would be accomplished the same day. For the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Wow. You see, the situation you and I are in may look bad. We may feel trapped in an awkward position. There is clear and present danger. As these Israelites were, they felt the situation that they were in was bad. They were trapped between the sea and the Egyptians. There was a clear and present danger of death and destruction. But Moses tells them, don't be afraid, stand firm. See the Lord's salvation that he will accomplish for you today. In other words, wait for the Lord to move. You and I, in this situation that we are in, may choose to panic, may choose to despair, to blame, to bicker, to argue. But perhaps we need to entrust this to the Lord. We do what we can, but leave the rest to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Verse 14, the Lord will fight for you, Moses says. And you must be quiet. <laughs> you know, Mahira, to be quiet. Amen. Because you and I like to talk. You and I like to, it's almost in our DNA to complain. Even to blame. But Moses tells the same people who were panicking and blaming him, the Lord will fight for you and you must be quiet. And here up to be quiet, isn't it? Psalm 37, starting with verse 7 says, 
Be silent before the Lord and wait expectantly for him. Listen, do not be agitated by one who prospers in his way, by the person who carries out evil plans. Are you listening to me, church? Do not be agitated. Refrain from anger and give up your rage. Give it up. Refrain from anger and give up your rage. Do not be agitated. He says it again. It can only bring harm. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 29 and following. So I said to you, don't be terrified or afraid of them. The Lord your God who goes before you will fight for you. Just as you saw him do for you in Egypt. And you saw in the wilderness how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries, carries his son all along the way you traveled until you reached this place. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 22. Don't be afraid of them for the Lord your God fights for you. Hmm. What do we do after we pray? What do we do while we wait Upon the Lord. The Bible says 107 times in the Old Testament, 42 times in the New Testament, the Bible says, do not be afraid. As much as fear is common to you and me, to man, the command of God is fear not. Lord, Enable us to fear not by your spirit, Lord God. So the message is, the message that God wants to convey is that we need to control our emotions and not have our emotions control us. You see, feelings can go everywhere can go up, down, side to side, and very often. We should not allow our feelings, our emotions to run freely and dictate the trajectory of our lives. The mark of a mature Christian is the ability to keep his passions and emotions under control. My friends, do you do your passions are your passions, are your emotions under control? We are to walk by faith, not by our feelings, not by our, our emotions. Amen, somebody. Our text, Exodus 14. We see a people who quickly forgot their God. This is the same God that sent 10 plagues into the Egyptians, to Egypt, for Egypt to let them go. They forgot that. They for, these, these people quickly forgot the pillar of cloud that led them by day and the pillar of fire that led them by night. They forgot that. They forgot manna. They have, there was enough reason to be confident in God, but fear overwhelmed them. God is saying to them and, and to you and to me, keep your emotions under control. Get some faith going my way, guys, God is saying. Trust me. I got this, God is saying. God is telling you and I, church, he's telling us there is nothing that I can't do. He is telling us there is nothing, church, there is nothing that I can't do. The battle is not yours, he's saying. It is mine. 
Amen. So in the midst of everything that we are going through, COVID, lockdowns, the economy, loss of jobs, feeling trapped, church, do what you can do, but leave room for God. Because there's nothing that He can't do. Would you clap your hands for the Lord? Amen. First Samuel 17, verse 47 says, And this whole assembly will know that it is not by sword or by spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. The battle belongs to Him. There's nothing that He can't do, and the battle belongs to Him. Romans 8, verse 31 and 37 What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 20, verse 15. Listen carefully, all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast number, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Verse 17, you do not have to fight this battle. Position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He is with you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Tomorrow, go out to face them for the Lord is with you. When the time comes and times will come like this, when you cannot solve a certain problem or problems and we cannot change circumstances. When those times come, we need to kneel because we do battle. Someone said we do battle on our knees. Leave room for God to move. Stay calm. Give him time to work. You say amen. And let me close with this. Verse 15. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to break camp. Now in the ESV, English Standard Version, it says, go forward, not break camp, go forward. In the NIV, it says, move on. In the Christian Standard Bible, it says, break camp. So in other words, what God is saying, what Moses is saying, or sorry, when, when, when God is saying to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites, break camp. What God is saying, that there is a time to stop crying. There is a time to stop whining. There is a time... To act, to move, to take a step. See, the Israelites were facing the waters of the Red Sea. They could not see across. It was a vast sea. It was too far to see land on the other side. They were just focused on the water in front of them and the pursuing Egyptian army behind them. But God's instruction, God's command was plain and simple enough. Break camp. Go forward. Move on. Some of us need to move on. Amen. God is saying move on. Go forward. Break camp. Stop sitting around. Stop moping. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Be quiet. Shut up. Go forward. Move on. God is saying. Pero Lord, ang tagal. Magna nine months na ito eh. How much longer, Lord? And look at this church. In verse, verse 15, the Lord tells Moses to tell the Israelites, break camp, move out, move on, go forward. This is hundreds of thousands of people. In verse 15, he says that, break camp. 
But it is only in verse 21 that Moses stretches out his hand over the sea and the Lord drove the sea back with a powerful east wind all that night and turned the sea into dry land, so the waters were divided. Church, look at this. That only happened in verse 21. In verse 15, the order was given to move out. And as they're moving out, nothing is happening yet. In fact, verse 21 says, The Lord drove the sea back with a powerful east wind all that night. It was not. Immediately, it took all night before the waters were divided. The waters did not divide all at once. Yet the Lord told the Israelites to break camp, go forward, move on way before that. Instead of blaming other people, maybe we should obey God, but obey God, break camp, move forward, move on. Because in this case, the waters parted as the people moved forward. They had to trust God for every step they took. Are you listening to me, church? They had to trust God with every step they took. Haven't you noticed it yet without walls? That God never gives his guidance two, three, four, five steps at a time. It's always one step at a time. God leads you. God leads me. God led the children of Israel one step at a time. Amen. Last few verses, Nehemiah. 9.19 9.19 You did not abandon them in the wilderness because of your great compassion. During the day, the pillar of cloud never turned away from them, guiding them on their journey. And during the night, the pillar of fire illuminated the way they should go. God leads one step at a time. Will we follow him? Luke 11.3 Give us each day our daily bread, one day at a time. God leads. Church, many times because of issues that bother us, you and I become paralyzed. We we live in fear. We put off dealing with situations at hand. We, We blame others. We blame even God. You see, we do not know what will happen a year from now. But we usually have an idea on what the next step should be. See, when you face a difficult situation, we need to make up our minds to prayerfully take the next logical step by faith. Matthew 6, verse 34. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And last, I leave you with this. The same verse in the Living Bible. So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow. Live one day. At a time. Live one day at a time. Church, leave room for God. Would you say amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for your word. Allow this word. Enable this word to overwhelm, to overtake our minds, to overtake our doubts and fears. Allow us to feel your presence, that you truly love us. 
and you truly walk with us every step of the way. Thank you, Lord, to ease our fears and our concerns as we follow you one step at a time, one day at a time, leaving room, leaving room for you, God, to work the impossibilities of life. We trust in you, Lord God. We worship you. We give back to you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen and amen. Church, in a few minutes, join us for communion. God bless you and God bless the Philippines.
elements as we partake of the Lord's Supper. The Zoom meeting ID and password will be flashed on screen. Thank you and have a blessed Sunday.